So yes, welcome to the Manage IQ webinar, the first Manage IQ webinar. Uh, this is all about our new release, the impending new release that uh, should be going uh, generally available in the next couple of days. Uh, we just released uh, the fourth release candidate, and with any luck, this should be the magic wand. Uh, but this is all about uh, Botvinnik, which is our second uh, release cycle, the completion of our second release cycle. Uh, and now we're heading into our third release cycle, which will be uh, Capablanca, but more on that stuff later. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of set the stage and kind of talk about what Manage IQ is, uh, why it's important, why you should care, and kind of looking back at a bit of the history. Uh, and then we'll look at what is Botvinnik itself, what kind of features are included, uh, what changes can you expect, how does this reflect kind of a, a shift in what we're doing at Manage IQ. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, new features, and John Hardy is here uh, to, uh, to show the, the, some demo videos of uh, Manage IQ Botvinnik in action. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up with uh, some Q&A at the end. Uh, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's get on with it. So what is Manage IQ? Manage IQ is, at its heart, a comprehensive way of viewing your infrastructure, uh, where, you know, in the modern data center, your infrastructure is you know, your virtualization platforms, uh, your cloud, uh, your public cloud uh, resources, uh, and all the applications and services that are running on top of those things. And Manage IQ is a way to, to view, to manage, uh, to provision, and control all these different infrastructure components it's about the inventory of all the assets that stretches across, that stretch across all of these platforms. Uh, and it's about the relationships between the assets that make up the inventory of all of the uh, infrastructure components that you have to manage. So it's, it's a single pane of glass. It's built on top of a very strong inventory structure and, uh, and data modeling uh, that gives you kind of the bird's eye view of your entire infrastructure. Uh, I can't uh, emphasize enough the, the aspect of, you know, comprehensive infrastructure management. That, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, and we support, you know, when it comes to uh, virtualization platforms and cloud plat uh, cloud management platforms, we, we support the, the popular ones, AWS, uh, VMware's uh, vSphere, uh, OpenStack, uh, many, many flavors of OpenStack, as well as you know, Red Hat Enterprise virtualization uh, and the open source Overt. Uh, and there are some more on the way, but uh, but more on that later. Uh, the other thing Manage IQ is is it's you know it is a platform in the truest sense, meaning that you can use it as an API, a RESTful API backend. That means if you want to integrate with your existing management frameworks, or if you want to create uh, management tooling around Manage IQ, you can do that. Uh, we uh, we're happy to announce that as of Botvinnik, the, the RESTful API has now reached parity with um, with the old SOAP API. Uh, but nobody uses SOAP anymore, right? So uh, it's all about it's all about rest or nothing. Um, so that's kind of gives you the the idea of of Manage IQ. So what what is this that makes Manage IQ unique? Um, and <laughs> I guess furthermore, uh, why do we use that stupid looking sheep uh, as the mascot? And when I first came up with the the sheep as kind of the the de facto mascot for Manage IQ, it was a take on a term of art that we use called fleecing, where fleecing is the ability to uh, go into a hypervisor and suck up all of the resource information about the uh, guests running on a given hypervisor and sort of collect all the assets running on those guests and hosts, uh, as well as the you know applications and services running on top of them. And, and it fills kind of the basis for you know, doing the, the asset relationship, the inventory management, and it sets the stage for all the other things you can do with Manage IQ. So that was kind of take one. But if you, you know, for why we have the sheep, because it relates to fleecing. What do you fleece? You fleece sheep. Uh, but taking the meta metaphor further, you know, there's a big debate in IT about uh, pets versus cattle or pets versus livestock. You know, we don't, we're supposed to be getting to the age where we don't treat our, uh, uh, IT resources as pets, but rather as cattle or livestock, because there are there are hundreds or thousands of them uh, moving in mass, and you you, know, you treat them as as a whole. Uh, but the sheep is there to remind us that that may be true, but a lot of them have sort of individual idiosyncrasies uh, that are uh, that are uh, germane to a particular platform that you have to manage. Um, and taking a step further, it's really about you know, the assets and inventory, these individual platforms can differ greatly. 
but you have to put them together to to uh, into some sort of comprehensive whole to give you the bird's eye view. I may be stretching the metaphor a bit, but it 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 means something to me. Um, and plus, it's a, it's adorable. It's it's the most uh, it's the most lovely mascot out there in open source. Um, but that's that's kind of what but it sets the stage for what makes ManageIQ unique, which is it starts with the inventory, starts with the inventory management, um, and fleecing is the key to that. It's how we it's how we collect information, uh, at least the initial piece of information. Like I mentioned, it's it's a comprehensive view of all of your infrastructure, uh, and I'll get into how that's kind of um, uh, I mean, that's always been the case, but we've, we've kind of added to you know, that aspect, that design element of Manage IQ. Um, but everything from the infrastructure, the host, that, you know, the bare metal that you put the stuff on, to the tenants that occupy those hosts, uh, whether you're talking about a virtualization platform or a public cloud platform. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, it's our dedication to inventory management that sets us apart from others. When you look at a lot of a lot of tools that call themselves cloud management platforms, they're really just provisioning tools. They're essentially kind of day one management space tools. How do I put my app in the cloud? How do I create a service in the cloud? They're not really about sort of the day two management pieces. How do I integrate these new components of my infrastructure into my lifecycle management? How do I integrate that into my you know, policy management? that extends across you know, all the platforms that I have to deal with. Um, that's kind of the, the basis for Manage IQ and, and one of the really unique elements. Uh, and like I mentioned, comprehensive cloud management, it's, it's really not just about provisioning. Provisioning is great, but provisioning is just one part. You know, everyone thinks of cloud, they think of self-service, but uh, unfortunately that, 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 uh, that aspect of self-service is usually limited to the provisioning part, and we go beyond that from you know, planning for uh, end of life for for certain uh, parts of the infrastructure to you know planning for adding new release uh, new resources to scaling uh, the architecture to you know, scaling new hosts that you want to add to a specific cloud platform um, and because we started with the whole inventory management piece we're able to construct this uh, orchestration and automation on top of it so that we have this kind of smart you know policy management this sort of smart resource planning. Uh, capacity and utilization. We're able to, you know, place workloads uh, where it makes sense according to, you know, what's happening at a given time. You know, you can tell because we we measure resources, uh, you're able to determine which uh, platforms are maxing out or close to maxing out, and which uh, need need a little help or need need some further scaling. So some features, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the fleecing is kind of the basis of it all. Um, Self-service provisioning and, and service catalog. Uh, service catalog is certainly essential for being able to utilize these services that are available. Um, capacity utilization, so you can tell like uh, which parts are, are using uh, uh, which, uh, whether it's a compute, memory, uh, resources, other resources, uh, storage. Um, quotas and chargebacks, so you can set quotas, uh, you can determine you know, both from an admin as well as tenant view, uh, how the uh, how close you are to, to quotas. Uh, you can determine chargebacks. You can uh, understand where the uh, uh, where the resource consumption goes and where um, you know, who's who's paying for which piece. Uh, it's, that's certainly useful for uh, service providers who want to use Manage IQ as the basis for their uh, management platform. Uh, configuration change management, so that you can you know again because we have the asset inventory. And we have the relationships between the, ass the assets. We're able to uh, create uh, change management uh, policies uh, that let you determine, you know, when when something uh, uh, when when changes have been made, uh, how to plan them uh, accordingly. Uh, policy engine management. This is probably one of the strongest pieces of Manage IQ. Uh, the ability to to automate uh, the policy engine is uh, is a, is definitely a plus. Um, and reporting, uh, the ability to take the stuff that, that you have and, and create reports based on it, uh, so you can uh, show your boss. Those are always those are always good. We've had a kind of subtle evolution over the last year. The last year has been uh, really great for the Manage IQ community. We've you know, we've we finally uh, open source Manage IQ about a year ago. In fact, almost a year ago to the day. I think it was June 19th when we made everything public. 
Uh, and in the beginning, we we really focused on kind of the cloud gateway aspect of it. The, the fact that you had you know a centralized gateway to all the different virtualization cloud uh, platforms sitting behind it, uh, and that was that was really kind of the key focus. Um, and it we, it still is, but there's been a subtle shift in that we're adding more pieces to the to the pie. Uh, when we talk about comprehensive infrastructure view, you know, we're taking that very seriously. And so now, you know, we have things like form integration. So it's not just, you know, look at your virtualization platforms, but now we're we're actually integrating uh, you know, things like, you know, bare metal provisioning, uh, the ability, you know, whatever uh, whatever uh, pieces of, you know, the form in that you used before, you can now, you know, integrate that into uh, your managed IQ dashboard view. So it's it's a um, we're just adding to what was previously available or possible. Uh, now it's really about you know, controlling your entire infrastructure. Um, for the user experience, it's not going to be that different, uh, but uh, but it's kind of a, uh, a difference on in messaging and how we're approaching you know, the view of uh, IT. A little bit of a little bit of backstory, a little bit of history. Uh, Managed IQ started off as a startup in around 2006. It was uh, geared towards VMware management. Uh, it really was a, a better VMware management dashboard. Uh, and over time, we uh, they've added a, a lot more uh, features to the base uh, to the base product. And they were doing so well that we uh, we being Red Hat acquired them in late 2012. And the idea was always that we were going to open source Managed IQ, uh, which we uh, as I mentioned, we did about a year ago in June 2014. Um, we announced that we were going to in the uh, in the OpenStack Summit Atlanta, and then a month later, we we actually opened up the source and and manageiq.org went live. And then we had our first release, the completion of our first release cycle, Anand, which is in September 2014. And just to give you an idea of the the naming, the nomenclature, you know, we we've had Anand, Botvinnik, and the next release cycle is Capablanca. Uh, these are all named after uh, chess. Grandmasters and, and world champions. So uh, our our uh, engineering team, as you can imagine, is is made up of a, uh, many uh, chess fans. Um, and then Botvinnik will be released any day now. And the RC4 was just released today. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you the URL uh, at the end of this uh, presentation where you can go grab the, the latest release. And as I mentioned, the next release cycle will be Capablanca. We're going alphabetically, so Capablanca, and then uh, whatever the whatever chess uh, world champion. Name starts with D. Will be next. The Managed IQ community is uh, is located at managedIQ.org. Um, just a couple of things that we're doing at the moment that you may be interested in. We've got you know, right now. If you go to managedIQ.org/depot, there's kind of a list of extensions that you can download. You can also contribute to. We are currently, in fact, we just started development of a uh, version two of the depot, which will be uh, much more robust. Uh, it'll be much easier for people to contribute to. As well as downloading and installing these extensions in your uh, Manage IQ deployments, um, it's based on uh, supermarket code. If you go to supermarket.chef.com, you'll see an example of the kind of platform that we're building out here. And if you want to talk about, ask questions about Manage IQ uh, related to you know using or developing with, you can go to talk.manageiq.org, where it's a very busy uh, discussion board. Uh, lots of engineers are there. A lot of experts uh, lurk and answer questions. And there's also Pound at Manage IQ on Freenode and IRC channel, uh, mostly for developers when you're discussing uh, developing uh, Manage IQ. And we have a really good YouTube channel. We can find a lot of demo videos. And I promise you the demo videos you're about to see uh, in this uh, presentation will be uploaded to YouTube, so you can view them anytime you want. So let's get on with uh, with Bob Vinick. What is new in this release? What can you expect? And what, and what will be coming uh, afterwards? One of the uh, one of the big uh, additions to Botvinnik is how we've uh, extended, augmented uh, our OpenStack management capability. Uh, two years ago, we added the ability to you know to manage the overcloud in OpenStack. That's kind of like the tenant view of everything, so that uh, you you could basically see whatever whatever Nova saw. Uh, since that time, uh, and with this release, we're adding the under cloud management piece. Uh, this is where you actually see the infrastructure providers uh, for the OpenStack deployment. You can actually see the hosts uh, on which the uh, OpenStack deployment resides. 
and you're able to tie that into tie in the infrastructure view with the tenant view. So you can see, you know, you can see the relations between you know the infrastructure pieces and the and the tenant pieces. Uh, this is really important if you want to diagnose what's happening with your uh, OpenStack deployment. Uh, when you're restricted to the tenant view, you, you kind of only get one half of the story. But if you want to actually see what's happening on the hosts where this stuff is residing, it's important to know which tenants tie into which uh, performance metrics that you want to uh, look at you know, on the hosts. Um, inventory for heat stacks. Uh, you'll notice that there are a lot of work that we've done on orchestration pieces in general. So here we're highlighting the heat orchestration uh, integration. And there's also a cloud formations integration, which I'll get into later. Um, you can now auto scale compute nodes. You can tell Nova uh, to just add more compute nodes when you need more compute power, and it will do it. Um, you can now look at infrastructure host events, and this ties into kind of the undercloud management that uh, that I was talking about earlier. Uh, you can now see the power states uh, uh, for the various uh, the various uh, compute machines, whether they're paused, rebooting, waiting, etc. Um, and you can also uh, on the tenant view, on the overcloud view, you can filter based on what kind of security group they're in, uh, their floating IPs, networks, et cetera. Uh, it gives you, a, basically you have a more uh, directed view, uh, especially for those who have large open site deployments where that's really useful. Another key addition to uh, Botvinnik is the Foreman integration. Um, for those that use the Foreman for, uh, for their orchestration or for configuration management, uh, we're happy to be able to uh, give you another view uh, of, you know, of your form and uh, deployment so that you can use it along with you know, all the other stuff that you use to, uh, to automate uh, you know, your, your, your infrastructure. Um, so as you can see, we've added uh, uh, the ability to you know, report a tag on, uh, on your form and deployment. Um, the form models are now exposed uh, in the automate section of uh, Manage IQ, so it, it's exposed as another uh, service model. Um, tag processing during provisioning. We've added an inventory collection. So basically, the uh, the relationship, the inventory relationship that existed in your uh, uh, informant uh, can now be imported into Manage IQ, and you can now have the organization location inventory. So that uh, the metadata associated with uh, Foreman is is uh, imported to Manage IQ. Continuing on with uh, AWS support, uh, we've, I think, uh, ManageIQ has had some ability to look at and control AWS assets uh, for about a couple of years, um, and now we're we're extending that and adding to it. Uh, you know, there there were some requests for you know feature parity between the VMware vSphere and, and AWS, and we are you know moving forward uh, towards that uh, ultimate goal. Um, AWS is uh, a bit uh, difficult at times because it, being Amazon, they want to do things the Amazon way, which means you know supporting uh, their particular uh, APIs and, and resources. But uh, we're happy to support. Uh, we're happy to report that uh, we're making progress in this area. Uh, beginning with CloudFormation, as I mentioned, you know, we've added uh, several integrations with orchestration components. Uh, CloudFormation is one of them. So inventory collection via uh, uh, CloudFormation is a is a nice addition. Um, AWS announced, uh, they released the AWS config, so it's a configuration management, change management uh, service that they, they added a few months ago. And we were one of the uh, few products and software management pieces uh, that were able to support AWS config uh, from the beginning. Um, you can now, we've now added uh, support for new instance types. Uh, so you, there's, there's a lot more variety there. Uh, and you can collect uh, different virtualization types. Uh, and we can also handle uh, power states, uh, just as with the, uh, the OpenStack uh, tenant view. In general, we have, you know, we've added quite a bit on the orchestration front. Um, the ability to tag is always a, uh, it's always a big thing. Uh, helps with, certainly helps with filtering uh, and automation. Um, also reporting. Um, the ability to report on the different uh, orchestration platforms you're using. And we have uh, some, other, as I mentioned before, um, going to other changes, 
the REST API is now full parity with SOAP. Uh, the ability to, uh, to, to fleece uh, hypervisors and hosts uh, has now been extended to support uh, a bunch of new different types from QCAL3 to vSAN uh, and now systemd and XFS. So again, looking at systemd there, that flows into uh, the support that we've added for Kubernetes uh, and in general sort of fills out the you know, comprehensive infrastructure view uh, that we've been talking about. Uh, and like I mentioned, we've added support uh, for Kubernetes uh, integration and management, uh, especially with in, in terms of inventory collection. As you can imagine, with Kubernetes there, there's a whole other aspect of container management, uh, which we've just started uh, to do. All right, so that gives you kind of a basic overview of where we are with Botvinnik uh, and kind of gives you set the stage for you know, what we're trying to do and where we are. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and allow uh, Mr. Hardy to uh, pick up the baton. Okay, thank you, John Mark. Um, there you go, my camera's on for about five seconds. I need a bandwidth because I'm in um, the UK, so I'm gonna turn my camera off. Let's see if we can share screen. Okay. So I've got a number of demonstrations here for you. If you attended uh, Vancouver, you would have seen some of this. Um, most of them are upstream, Manage IQ, with uh, just one being the downstream, just to uh, tickle your fancy. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one here. And uh, whilst they are recorded, uh, they were only recorded recently for, like I said, OpenStack Summit. This one's going to talk about power control, provisioning, and console. Very OpenStack centric. You can see here I'm terminating an instance. So I can use Manage IQ um, as an operations um, environment for my uh, instances in OpenStack, just as much as you can VMware, SCVMM, Amazon, um, and Rev. Here I'm selecting an instance, or uh, an image to provision as an instance. It's Fedora 21, which I'm selecting from the, from the catalog list there. It can fill in details to my provisioning dialog. Now, you can do a number of different types of provision inside of Manage IQ. You can do this type of ad hoc provision where I can just say, hey, go and give me you know, 50 of these um, instances based on this image, give it a name, and Manage IQ will automatically sequence the naming for you and it will uh, and, you know, repeat the task X number of times. You can also have Manage IQ choose automatically the environment that it places it into, again, based on the tagging. Um, taxonomies that you're using in your in your environment, or you can go this route, which is where you actually specify each and individual step of the process. So, yeah, you can you can go as little little or as much as you wish. Now, I'm just selecting the key, uh, guest key pairs here. Obviously, if you're doing a uh, VMware provision, you're going to be asked if different questions. You're going to be asked things like you know the folder, the cluster, um, the host, and the data store. But again, Manage IQ can make all of those decisions for you as well. So, you know, you can use best fit placement inside of Manage IQ to go and find the right cluster and find the right um, location to put your provisioning task. Now, you can bundle all of this up into a service catalog, uh, which we have as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a demonstration of that today, but um, you can create service catalog items and call them the name of your applications. And those, those service catalog items are quite cool because you can heterogeneously mix different workloads together. So you can see here, the provisioning job is completed. Um, it's on its way. So it's that one there, Jay Hardy. Um, so that provisions fairly quickly. Obviously on OpenStack, it is fairly quick to provision. And finally, just to demonstrate, we can see now the console coming up for this workload. Uh, so between, you know, being able to effectively, you know, power control the instances, you can provision new instances, either ad hoc or in a service catalog mode. And then you can also connect to those instances afterwards using standard consoles. Now the console support we introduced actually in, in this Botvinnik release is not only just for OpenStack, but it's also replacing the VMRC capabilities that we have, which are pretty bespoke to VMware. But um, yeah, we wanted a, a, a unified um, solution across VMware, OpenStack and Red Hat virtualization. So this is working very well for us. That's that demonstration there. Let's switch over to um, another one. We're going to have a look at um, one called capacity and utilization. And really, 
what I want to show here in this demonstration is how CAP and U data can be collected at varying levels um, with inside your infrastructure. So being OpenStack again, um, there's some important things here, which is OpenStack doesn't give you access to the capacity and utilization data of the physical resources usually. That's what you'd usually find. And certainly Manage IQ was up was this way for some time. Um, up until this release, Botvinic, where we've added it to the hardware as well, the undercloud. So we're looking here at an instance called Demo. You can see the characteristics around it, uh, you know, it's, it's startup time, it's relationship data, um, where it sits in the environment. Now, on the top, we've got monitoring and utilization. So I can select monitoring and utilization, and I can now start to see um, the metrics coming from this individual instance running in the over cloud, so in the tenant space. I'm changing the metric collection to hourly because when I recorded this, it's only been running for a few hours. And you can see here that there's been a spike in CPU. We've got disk IO and network IO also being collected as part of the metric collection for this single instance. So what you can do is something pretty clever, which is you can actually pick up this instance and then start compare, um, comparing it to its node, its parent node or its parent cluster. So if the instance was running hot, was it due to a spike on the actual host, the node that it's sitting on? Because maybe it's got nothing to do with the actual virtual machine. Maybe, maybe the virtual machine was starved of resources because of something else going on. And that's what's really nice about this capability is that you can you can pick up these individual virtual machines that may or may not have a problem and compare them to their hosts and clusters, which is what we just did there. I'm now looking at uh, infrastructure and nodes. So this is a quite a unique view here because I'm looking at the nodes that are sitting in um, a, a cluster for OpenStack. So these are the real KVM hypervisors underneath. I've selected one of them, and you can now see here hourly results is returning CPU, memory, disk I/O, network I/O, and virtual machines. So the virtual machine one, for instance, is showing me here that you know we started off with one, um, and then throughout the day, um, at those selected times, eight and nine a.m. this morning, um, I then spiked another two virtual machines on top of that. But that's just looking at one individual node. Um, in obviously the uh, OpenStack infrastructure. What I'd like to do now is look at the, the deployment role cluster for the compute. So I've got controller clusters and I've got compute clusters effectively known as deployment roles. And you can see here, I've got two nodes sitting in the compute cluster. And if I select utilization now, I get an aggregate of both nodes in, in the deployment role. And you can see here, changing it to hourly, I'm now getting the aggregate of CPU, memory, disk IO, network IO, hosts. My host is telling me how many hosts are in this, uh, in this deployment role. And you can see here, actually, there's actually a stopped virtual machine. Um, so as I've introduced more um, data points, data collection points, e.g. nodes to this story, um, that I'm not just seeing provisioning happening, I'm actually seeing um, retirement as well happening in, in, in the same metric collection. So that's um, capacity and utilization. Now, um, I think I've got another video later on the, um, the downstream, which shows you how we collect uh, across all environments. What's really cool about Manage IQ is that the views you're seeing here are exactly the same views, whether you're looking at Red Hat virtualization um, or VMware. Um, or even um, Amazon as well. So in Amazon, we support CloudWatch um, Basic. So you can go in there and you can collect the same metrics as you do on OpenStack. You can see inside of um, Amazon for the instances. Um, so if you're an operator, you're going to have a very common look and feel to all of your performance capacity and utilization data irrelevant of the environment that you're dealing with. Let's Close that one and let's move on to number. I'm going to go for number four. This is manual scale. So, this was really groundbreaking because whilst this is still um, very OpenStack centric, we are actually able to scale an OpenStack infrastructure. So, whilst 
obviously lots of people out there are worrying about how to install OpenStack. We've, uh, we at Red Hat have uh, surpassed that. Um, and uh, in the community, we have the RDO manager, um, which is a uh, under cloud server capable of deploying um, new resources into OpenStack infrastructures. Now, CloudForms can actually, sorry, Manage IQ can actually uh, leverage the under cloud server and it can help scale those environments. And what we're showing you here is we're showing you the deployment roles and the providers that are sitting behind this OpenStack infrastructure, which are, you know, they're pretty much the same whether you're looking at VMware or whether you look at Red Hat virtualization. You have this notion of providers, you have the notion of hosts and data stores and so on. So we're looking at an infrastructure provider here called the Undercloud Server. He looks after the OpenStack infrastructure that's running the cloud. And all of the stats here are telling me that, you know, on this provider, we've got one node, we've got uh, one virtual machine running, we've got, uh, uh, you know, a number of templates and so on. We've got the aggregate data for the nodes as well. So what I would like to do is I'd like to take this, this Nova compute deployment role, which has only got one one node in it and uh, obviously scale that up. Now to do that, I select the provider and I can just quite simply say scale out. That should be happening now. So selecting the provider, which is looking after those deployment roles, you can see scale this infrastructure provider. So by selecting this, it's gonna kick off a workflow, which is basically asking, you know, First, it's telling us how many hosts we've got available. We've got uh, one being used by controller, one being used by compute, and we've got five in the bucket. So what I'd like to do is change the computer to, and then say, go and scale. Now, by clicking the submit or scale button, that's going to then kick off orchestration inside of um, Manage IQ under the automate domain. Um, which is then going to start speaking to the under cloud server, whether that would be the RDO manager or whether it would be the uh, Red Hat OpenStack manager being the downstream. Um, that component is then going to start performing the scale out for us and constantly giving us feedback on what it's doing. Um, so you can see here that uh, using a little bit of wizardry and uh, video editing, the uh, time is completed very quickly and we've got a brand new server now. That's the one to the uh, to the left. It's not quite authenticated yet. It will take another couple of minutes for it to come around. Um, but basically, what's happened there in the background is that Manage IQ has spoken to the under cloud server. The under cloud server has selected the uh, resource to be uh, provisioned, and it's actually bare metal provisioned a new blade. So those are five individual blades, and it's taken one of those blades and decided that 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 is going to become a compute node. Now. It does use algorithms to work out which way to use. Um, that's a story for another time. But basically, it's it's gone and installed a new copy of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux on there and installed OpenStack. And you can see here now that we've now got two nodes sitting in this deployment role, uh, deployment role called Nova Compute. Two, uh, both of these nodes are running Neutron, for instance. There's a breakdown of the services there, and that's that's pretty much a manual scale. Is that with Manage IQ, you can drop in to Manage IQ, you can point it at a under cloud server um, and then start managing your infrastructure components of, um, of your OpenStack environment. Like I say, how, differ, how does that differ for say a VMware world? Well, we don't have out of the box integrations with VMware to self scale their environments, but we do have all of the other components. So you know, if you wanted to make Manage IQ go and scale ESX servers, it can do that. It can do that absolutely. You can you can create the automation um, workflows that can you know PXC provision um, ESXi servers, and we've done that in a number of places actually. And um, there's a number of demonstrations out there to show you that it can be done. So it's very much you know a normalization across all environments, trying to provide um, many of the same capabilities. So that was auto scale, which is, uh, sorry that was manual scale, which was pretty clever, but. If you've been watching tentatively, you would have seen the capacity and utilization data that was coming through actually could be used with um, Manage IQ's um, policy state management to actually trigger this automatically. So yes, we can manually scale, but wouldn't it be nice if you could actually scale automatically? Um, and the question is, does Manage IQ have everything it needs to be able to do that? And uh, this demonstration is hopefully going to take you through that. 
So we're looking at deployment roles. We can see we've got controller and uh, compute here. So I'm going to click on the compute. We can see the number of services running on the OpenStack status area. So we've got Neutron, Nova, and support services. By clicking monitoring utilization, we're going to see um, you know, some of the graphs that we saw earlier, which is the aggregate of CPU memory disk IO network for this Nova compute cluster. So what's interesting is, is that we've got the data points coming in, so we know how we know how it's running. What if we would be able to create an alert, like a threshold monitor? And we can see that here. We've got one, it's active, it's based on the deployment role. So it's going to look at deployment role for real-time performance. And then it's going to say, right, if the memory goes above 50% for more than one hour, then it's going to do something. So it's going to send an email for a start. So out of the box, it will just send an email. It will also write it to the timeline, which you'll we'll see in a second. And then it's also going to um, issue some automation, which is the last send management event. So three out of the box capabilities um, will actually see your OpenStack environment auto scale out of the box just using standard capabilities with inside of manage iq so threshold monitoring on on real-time performance uh, along with a bit of automation um, and then we put it onto the timeline so whilst we're waiting for that to happen let me just skip forward a little bit so here we are here's the timeline and we can see here there's the event um, you can see it there in the top right i click on it now and it's uh, openstack instance create um, has finished so You'll see inside of Manage IQ live on the timeline every single um, every single action that happens. Um, and in this particular case, this was an alert that was being triggered um, based on the memory threshold, um, which we spiked deliberately. And uh, Manage IQ then went into automation mode and provisioned another um, Nova compute node for us. So that brings us to the end of that, which is a pretty groundbreaking demonstration of how you can use Manage IQ to either mani uh, manually scale or auto scale. And really the takeaway from here is, yes, you can auto scale OpenStack infrastructures, but you can also do lots and lots of other types of triggers. So yes, you can trigger on real-time performance, but you, you can also trigger on things changing or things being um, provisioned or being retired or deleted and so on. So whatever the trigger may be, whatever the event is, you can then do a varying number of actions. Um, and that's what Manage IQ is effectively doing here. Is it's just eating its own dog food to be able to do the auto scaling. It's not actually a, uh, a, a deliberate feature. You get it because of what Manage IQ brings to the party. So, with that in mind, I'm going to switch over to the downstream. Now, it's been some time since I've seen this one, so you'll have to bear with me. So, I'm logging on to um, the equivalent downstream, which is called ta uh, which is called CloudForms. So you get the log on dashboard. It looks fairly similar, as you can see. There's not a, lot, not a lot of difference here. The reason why I wanted to show you this is because I wanted to show you the single pane glass view. Um, and that's what you're seeing here, is that unfortunately, the videos um, for the OpenStack uh, capabilities are literally in an OpenStack world, and that is it for the, for the virtue of what, where they were shown. But here, what you're able to see is you're able to see um, you know, the equivalent of Manage IQ um, populated with lots and lots of assets or artifacts. So you can see here we've got Amazon workloads, we've got um, rail workloads, so based on Rev, based on Amazon, based on OpenStack, we've got some VMware in here. I'm sure I've got some SC VMM as well. We've got a mixture between Windows workloads, Red Hat work, uh, Enterprise Linux workloads, as well as some Fedora ones and some Suzy. So you can see that we're very good at managing heterogeneously across different providers, different capabilities. So that's skip through here. One other thing I wanted to show you was um, here's a nice view uh, which shows you individual one of each basically. So you can see on the, on the left hand side we've got a Red Hat Enterprise Linux running on OpenStack, we've got a Windows running on VMware, we've got a Linux variant running on Amazon and then another Windows running on Rev, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization and then finally a Windows running on OpenStack. So yeah you can mock up and mash in as many different uh, workloads on whatever platforms, whatever pro providers you've got plugged in to manage IQ will appear in, in the single pane glass view. Now, one thing you can actually do with these workloads 
is you can actually do um, what we call state management, um, uh, smart state analysis. And on your right hand side here, you can see configuration um, and you can see security and you can see some numbers here. This, this is a this is a virtual machine we're looking at. Um, and the users is 41 and the packages of 1,221. Basically what we're able to do, and Mark, uh, John Mark discussed this earlier, was we're able to go in and um, forensically analyze a virtual machine. And whether that virtual machine is sitting inside a Red Hat of virtualization or VMware or even instances in the, in, inside of OpenStack, including templates and images, we can actually take them and we can crack them open and we can see all of the um, individual uh, registries, files, um, users, groups, patches, applications. We can see all of that in any power state. And this is what this demonstration here is going to show you, is that we can actually pick up, for instance, a virtual machine called Test Apache, and we can compare it against not only itself, but we can also compare it against its template, for instance. So in this particular case, I'm going to select both the template, its parent, and the virtual machine. And I'm going to say, right, can you compare these two? Now, I can put a number of different filters on. So I can say, right, yeah, uh, let's compare the guest applications. And what it's doing is it's picking up both of these virtual machines, one being a template, one being a VM. And then it's going to compare um, all of the applications between the two uh, uh, between the two entities. I can then tell it to show only the differences. I want to see the combinations. And we can see here that actually the HTTP Apache version is actually different between the template and the running instance. Now, not only can we do that on virtual machines in the same provider, but we can even do it across cross provider. And that's what this demonstration here is showing, is that I've actually picked up a virtual machine, which is Red Hat Enterprise Linux on VMware, and I've also picked up Red Hat Enterprise Linux on Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. And I'm doing exactly the same thing again. And again, Manage IQ, in this case, Powerforms, will actually give me the result and show me exactly what's different, uh, what is different between these two workloads. And in this particular case, it's the CFME version is 5.2.37 versus 5.2.1.8. So you can see how you know, very easily you can do configuration management. You can compare yourself with your template. You can compare yourself with your friend sitting next to you. You know, if your friend sitting next to you is running faster than you, then you can compare your virtual machines to theirs and find out why they configured theirs better, for instance. So that pretty much um, concludes, I would have thought, most of the demonstrations for today. I want to make sure that there's enough good um, time for Q&A. As you know, we can demonstrate this for days and days and days. There's so much feature here. So I'm going to pass back to John Mark now. I'll leave this running. Over to you, John. Thank you, John Hardy. You are a national treasure. Uh, thanks so much for going through that. Um, we have a couple of wrap-up slides here. Let me, uh, let me put those on for you. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, the Botvinnik release is uh, the fourth release candidate is available today. So if you go to uh, manageiq.org slash download slash develop, if you follow that URL, you'll, you'll be able to, to grab it. Uh, we offer three, we offer appliances um, for three platforms, for deploying on three platforms, those being uh, uh, vSphere or uh, OpenStack, as well as uh, Rev or uh, Overt. Um, to download which, whichever one you want to uh, deploy. Uh, talk about it at talk.manageiq.org. Uh, like, like I mentioned, we have some very active discussion there. Uh, we, and frankly, that was a really good way to vet uh, previous release candidates. In fact, that's how we found a couple of issues with the release candidates. So, so do you report any problems you find there uh, or on our uh, uh, GitHub uh, repository? Uh, you can also talk to us on Twitter. Uh, we're at the at manageiq uh, uh, handle. Um, and uh, if all goes well, we should be able to use this uh, release candidate as the official uh, generally available release, uh, uh, hopefully this Thursday. But we can't promise that. Uh, we're assuming that uh, it works as, as, as intended. Uh, the next release cycle is Capablanca. Uh, we decided on the name Capablanca after a uh, voting, tight voting process. Uh, Capablanca won by a vote of seven to six, I believe. 
Uh, and we've got a few things I can tell you about already that will be going into that release. Uh, one thing is turning Manage IQ into a standard uh, Rails app, uh, standardizing, making it easier for, I guess, for people to, uh, especially Rails developers, to uh, uh, come up to speed on the developer process. Um, also, as part of the uh, next release cycle, we'll be uh, upgrading the, the Ruby that we use to 2.2. Uh, Rails will become uh, 4.2. We'll be using a Postgres 9.4 and Apache 2.4. Uh, and one thing we don't mention here is that on the um, on the community appliance uh, for manage.q.org, the uh, the base uh, operating system will be uh, CentOS 7.1. I think Wattvinic is currently on CentOS 6.6, .6, uh, so that will also be upgraded for the next release cycle. One of the main features that we'll be driving towards with Capablanca is uh, making uh, cloud and virtualization providers or actually any kind of provider, pluggable, so that it's easier for outside people to come in uh, and add their particular service provider uh, or service into the uh, Manage IQ uh, you know, dashboard and, and inventory. Um, this will make it much easier for uh, you know, people who want to participate in the Manage IQ, Manage IQ community to do so. Um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is based on a lot of the work that went into uh, supporting uh, form and integration for this release. So I think a lot of the lessons learned there uh, will be turned into uh, making it easier for different people to uh, to add you know their their providers into Manage IQ, uh, from configuration management providers to cloud providers to you know service providers. Um, hopefully, it'll be uh, easier with the Capablanca release. And uh, just to give you a heads up, um, if you want to have more hands-on involvement with um, Manage IQ, if you're coming to Red Hat Summit uh, in Boston uh, from June 23rd to the 26th. We are having a community day. Uh, you can register at the uh, URL you see here. Um, and we'll be having a, a review of Botvinnik, uh, so you can have more of a hands-on view of what's going on, as well as uh, you know, uh, some, a look at some of the works in progress that, are, that will be going into the uh, Capablanca release. Uh, and with that, I think I'm going to declare this webinar over. Uh, well, thank you so much for attending. I hope this was helpful. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, give the Botvinnik uh, release a spin, the release candidate a spin. Uh, let us know uh, how it works for you, and uh, we're hoping for a release this Thursday. Thank you so much for attending.